Shaba. And I have the privilege of introducing one of the amazing fathers in the body of Christ. Actually, he's really. Money! Everybody, this is Laura coming to you today from End Time Apostasy. I hope you guys are doing well. Now, guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about Jackie Hill Perry, and I'm going to show you why um, I finally got around to making a video about her. I had to do quite a bit of research before I brought this to you, but this particular ministry that you're looking at here, Camino a Regreso, is actually a Spanish um, apologetics uh, ministry in Spain and for the most part a lot of their stuff is really really good and I've been um I've talked not talked voice to voice but emailed with them um, this particular ministry and uh, they the woman is that has minister has talked to me has been really nice and um, anyway so what I wanted to show you and um, the reason why I decided to do this video is because this particular ministry is pushing Jackie Hill Perry and I'm going to show you some very troubling stuff about Jackie Hill Perry. Now do I say that Jackie Hill Perry is not saved? No I don't say that. I've heard her say that. I've heard her preach the gospel. However the Bible does tell us to look at the fruit. Okay? So we're supposed to look at the fruit and what I'm going to show you is not good with Jackie Hill Perry. So, she has this, but way down here, it was down in May, May 6th, I think it was. She put up um, a post, there it is, um, an excellent testimony filled with very interesting messages from North American Jackie Hill Perry, who experienced lesbianism and how her beliefs changed when she found Christ. Her way of explaining is sweet and profound, and many of us can relate to the things she says, the way God showed her where she was wrong, and led her by the hand to discover the message from the love of the love of the cross. Okay, so she has a video here. Now I contacted her. And um, I wanted to contact her because I was sincerely concerned. I contacted her after I left a comment underneath this, explaining to her how many people, what kind of people she hangs around with, and that there are that they are quite dangerous. The people that she hangs around with, quite frankly. So this, um, I'm going to show you now. Um, Anyway, I contacted her. I didn't hear anything back. Um, you know, and I tell, I told her I was completely confused because we had had some kind of, you know, contact between each other because of the fact that this is an apologetics ministry also. And I have to say, a lot of the stuff on her website is really good. But I find this very, very troubling and I had to bring it to your, to your um notice and also there may be spanish people listening to me who speak english and spanish and follow her um and they also need to be aware that this is something that isn't good now do you uh, is there a video of of um jackie hill perry preaching the gospel yes is it sound yes but i want to show you some things that trouble me about her Okay, so uh, first of all, we're going to start at Jackie Hill Perry's page here. That's her there. She was born in 1989, okay? And um, I think she came to know Christ as far as I know, by 2010, as far as I know. I could be wrong, but I think that's true. If I'm wrong, guys, let me know in the comments, okay? 
So it says this: Jackie Hill Perry is an author, poet, Bible teacher, and hip hop artist, whose latest album Crescendo. Released in May 2018, since becoming a Christian, she has, has been compelled to use her speaking and teaching gifts to share the light of the gospel of God as authentically as she can. She is the author of "Gay Girl, Good God: The Glory of Who I Was and Who God Has Always Been," and the Bible study "Jude: Contending for the Faith in Today's Culture." At home, she is a wife to Preston and mommy to Eden and Autumn. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you who she's connecting with, and I find this very bad and extremely troubling. You know, the scripture is very clear. It says to warn an heretic once, to warn an heretic twice, and then have absolutely nothing to do with them. We're supposed to separate from false teachers. We're not supposed to fellowship. With false teachers, by fellowshipping with false teachers, you're essentially agreeing with what they're teaching. Now she says Jackie Hill Perry has been known to say that she doesn't agree with the Word of Faith movement, that she thinks it's nonsense. But the Bible clearly says that there she is not to fellowship with false teachers, which she does. Okay, so here we are at TBN. Now I, we have her here. All right. And we have Matt and Laurie Crouch, okay, and they're talking to Jackie Hill Perry on TBN. Now, as you can see on TBN, as we all know, Christine Kane, heretic, word of faith heretic, T.D. Jakes, modalist, doesn't believe、um, in the Trinity. Joe Lowsey, need I say more? Priscilla Shirer, another one who's who's a, a who's a, a false teacher. Okay, Kirk Cameron. I have made a video about him. Okay, so in that respect, guys, this is dangerous. Now, the next thing we're going to come over here is to the passion. Okay, um, so we are um at the passion conference, and guess who runs this? Louis Giglio, and look who are. Look who we're talking: Jackie Hill Perry, Jeannie Allen, Matt Chandler, Levi Lusco. He's he's a New Apostolic Reformation teacher. Ben Stewart. Now I'm going to show you Ben Stewart. Okay, so Ben Stewart is in、um, the Passion City Church with Louis Giglio, and I'm going to show you a video of Louis Gig Giglio kissing. The Pope. Yeah, he's connecting with the One World religion. So let's just so Jackie Perry, in a sense, is actually fellowshipping with complete known heretics. Okay, this is not biblical, guys. This is really dangerous. Okay, so let's just play that video. Okay, guys. So this is an article、um, that goes back to 2019, and ex-lesbian Jackie Hill Perry rebukes Christians who are who are angry she shared a stage with Bethel Christine Kane. Now, this was her response to that. Okay, I want you to listen to this. I'm going to be a bit frank, so clutch to your pearls or grab your tea, whatever suits you best. One thing I want you to all to know about me is that I'm not tribalistic when it comes to ministry. You might see me on platforms with reformed folk one day, and non-reformed folk the next day. You might see me laughing, laughing it up with Southern Baptists one moment, and being churchy with some Church of Gods and Christ Saints up、um, the next. Why? Because I believe that God's church is big and multifaceted, and it's make. And it, sorry, and it's made up of people that are complicated and nuanced. Our approaches to evangelism, the local church, preaching, spiritual gifts, gifts, worship style, etc., vary. But when there is a unified commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the inerrancy and the authority of Scripture, 
and the and love for God in neighbor, the unity for which Christ prayed, is made possible. I don't agree with everybody I do ministry with, including folk people might call theologically sound, some of them being blindly complicit when it comes to white supremacy, who are faithfully inspired by the theological musings of slave masters, but that's a whole other conversation. But I love them still, and where I disagree, I'm open to discussion, and where I can learn, I have ears to hear. So yeah, just in case you think I'm a part of your tribe, just know that I'm not. I'm I'm too free for that. Now she says the people that she's with, as long as they're biblically sound. <laughs> uh, I beg to differ. Christian Kane is a word of faith mogul. Jen Johnson is calls um, Jesus the Holy, the uh, like a blue genie. And the Holy Spirit to me is like the genie from Aladdin, and he's That's funny, fun. and he's sneaky. He's silly. He's wonderful. So here is a picture of Jackie Hill Perry and Jen Johnson. Jackie Hill Perry says this at Jen Johnson 20 is my new friend. So she's hanging around with heretics. Now here's the thing. How can you be fed of God when you are hanging around with heretics? Right? How can, how can that happen? Scripture says, come out and be ye separate. We're not to even, you know, invite them into our houses, guys. It's that serious. This is, the um, Bethel is a cult. They teach that Jesus is not God, but he was a man who was anointed of God. The second psalm. You're my beloved son. Today I have begotten you. Acts 13 tells us, that that phrase from the Father, today I have begotten you, is in reference to the resurrection. So he was born through Mary, the virgin, and then he was born again in resurrection. The first one to touch him was Mary, the virgin, when he was born naturally. The first person to touch him when he was born again was Mary Magdalene. The Virgin Mary touched him in the law and Mary Magdalene the harlot touched him in grace. If you follow somebody or something and literally all the content they produce is talking about other people, like you don't like need you don't these need people to teach you how to spot how to false teaching or error. You need the spirit, you need, you the, need church, the church, and you need, and you the, need Bible. the Bible. You don't need, you don't need a, constant a constant diet, diet of someone tearing, tearing down, down the body, body to teach to you teach how to... Con how to Okay, she's talking about te tearing down the body. Well, first of all, Jackie, if you're watching this, you don't have much discernment yourself because you're running with all of the false teachers. You're not reading the scripture where it says to separate from heretics. You're connecting with um, Jen Johnson, who is a heretic. Her father is a heretic and you're, ha you're connecting. So obviously you're not reading the Bible like you're telling people to do here that you recognize this, the Holy Spirit. You're, you don't recognize the Holy Spirit. It's very clear that you don't recognize the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what you're saying is, is not biblical by any stretch of the imagination. It, there is a call for apologia, which means the defense of the faith. And we are to defend the faith and call out false teachers. The Apostle Paul called out false teachers. And, you know, and he cried bitter tears because people were being led astray. And he called them out by name. So let's continue, brethren. For the, For the faith. That's not what Jude offered. You. He, he offered the Old Testament to them <laughs> to give them some context for how to discern false teaching in their presence. Guard your heart and guard your mind uh, from those who would tempt you and disciple you 
into lovelessness in the name of contending for the faith. Okay. So here so here's the thing guys. There's nothing more loving than warning a brother or a sister who is involved in false teaching to to drag them out of the fire. Now we know that Jesus does that, but it's good to bring the truth. The truth pierces the darkness, Jackie. And I'm annoyed with you right now. I love you, but I'm annoyed with you right now because you what you're saying is not truthful. Oh, but one thing I do know is that God tells us to call out false teachers because you're protecting them from being in the fire. And to say it's not love is absolutely ridiculous. And I'll say that word ridiculous because it is ridiculous because when people do this, like me, we do it because we love people and we want to see them safe out of the arms of hell. It's really, really serious. This is not a joke. This is not just someone getting their knee hurt. This is an eternal soul. So people like myself who do do this ministry, we do it out of a spirit of love and compassion because we want to see the people that are made in the image and likeness of God to come to know Christ. Okay, so let's continue. Yeah. Yeah. One verse a week, that's my daily diet. Y'all talk too much, y'all should try some silence. They shoot in the grocery stores where the sirens. They preach against CRT like it ain't white boys with AOS that's dreaming about killing me, stealing my body and tied to lynching tree. Uh. I'm about to buy back my granny house, get my own reparations. I ain't patient now, yeah. Satan gon' play in the lake that was waiting for us. You playing, I'm praying for love. What if I told you they stole us and told us the Holy Ghost ain't coming, summoning blood? Judgment is coming, I'm running that race, and the races, the lake is. Just waiting for you. Okay, guys, so I'm going to be reading an article. But I just want to make something very clear when I'm reading this. I am shocked by what Jackie has said there. Um, because every single Christian and every person is made in the image and likeness of God. And we as Christians do not look at the tribe or the persons or wherever they're from every single human being has an eternal soul and is made in the image and likeness of god and this what she's pushing is really quite demonic quite frankly and um, so i'm going to read some of this because this gentleman has um wrote this out now as you can see there he's talking about the instagram rap there that you just heard so let's just listen to this just who is jackie hill perry condemning to the lake of fire who is she condemning to hell and he quotes the rap here they preach against crt like it ain't and white boys with ars that's guns for those of you who don't know that's dreaming about killing and stealing my body and tying it to a lynching tree and judgment is coming and that racist the lake is just waiting for you she she equates those white people who preach against CRT with overt racists with guns and who lynch people. She says judgment is coming to those anti-CRT white people will be cast into the lake of fire. The demonization of white people who preach against CRT while, while not demonizing people of color but also preach against CRT demonstrates an irrational hatred against white people and specifically against white people who preach against CRT. CRT or critical race theory is an unbiblical philosophical framework that presents its premise the following. Number one, systemic racism is an inherent part of American society. Number two, the systemic racism can be found in all areas such as education, housing, employment, healthcare, 
government, the military, the Christian church, and of course, it's inherent in the nature of white people. Number three, the systemic racism manifests itself in the racial inequalities that are inherent in the laws, regulations, policies, and institutions throughout America, as well as the inherent racism found in white people. Racism can only be understood and thus properly explained by those who have experienced it. First and foremost, this refers to African Americans, and then secondly by other people of color, as it is believed white people are the prominent progenitors of racism in America. They cannot be the victim of racism and therefore do not understand it and are disqualified from speaking about it. But there are some of us that have learned other things. Some may not have been there to hear the sound of a body swinging back and forth on a tree, the cracking of the branch and the laughter of the ones that made the news. You might not have been there in the pews when the deacons made sure the color folks sat in the balcony as not to sit too close to the white parishioners as the, as the herd, the preacher tell them that all this segregation that's going on was the will of Almighty God. Some of you in this room probably weren't old enough to see all that the generation before you did, but don't think that in some way you haven't been taught by it. Taught to not take the death of a brown body serious even when it swings, or should I say retweets, in front of your face. Taught to stay seated in your pew while oppression happens all around you. Taught not in words usually, but by living that this work, this work of loving your neighbor and making sure others do the same doesn't belong to you. Taught that because your beautiful baby boy can walk down the street with Skittles and tea in his hand when no one threatened by the color of his skin, that the privilege of safety means that you are exempt from caring about the price of black pig pigment. Oh, surely we have learned some things. That the letter, a letter from a Birmingham jail, a letter Dr. King wrote in 1963 to Christians, white Christians to be specific, contains in it the same frustrations being voiced to our white brothers and sisters today in 2018. The letter is 55 years old, and yet this generation has not fully improved upon the beliefs and the behavior of the prior. The urgency of justice is still being questioned. The hearts of many brown and black believers are still disheartened as their brothers and sisters, the brothers and sisters that they share pews with who seem to be so unwilling to pursue authentic peace, the authentic peace that includes the presence of justice and not the peace that prefers the absence of tension. How could it be when we set our eyes on Christ instead of setting our eyes on our Father's idols? and everything else that keeps us from gospel diversity, you can be sure that is when we begin equipping the next generation for gospel diversity. Thank you. And guess what? What your children, your disciples, your church members, your youth group, they are learning more than you know. They've seen who you invite over for dinner heard one plea for the peace of a black mother whose son was killed in a backyard or a petition to God on behalf of a Hispanic teen wondering if she would be deported from the only home she has ever known they are watching who you watch they are listening to who you are learning from if there is any indifference in your heart towards gospel diversity, you better know that your indifference will be to them a norm by which their worldviews will be shaped. I live in the city. I lived here. I know racism is thick in St. Louis. 
in the church. And most races don't believe that they're that. And so there's a level of blindness that only God can show you. Okay, guys, so here is a tweet uh, from Jackie Hill Perry. And he's talking, she, she's talking about uh, pray um, for Jay Gibbons. And he was a hip hop artist in America who is um, meant to be a Christian and he left, right? And she has hashtag Black Lives Matter. Now we know what that's all about. And this, this lovely lady, Bora Nee, says, um, at Jackie Hill Perry, do you know that Black Lives Matter came from t the liberal agenda formed by two lesbians? And then Jackie Hill says, does the source negate the heart of the statement? So that's, that's very telling, guys. Very, very telling. Okay, guys, so this is another tweet. And uh, she says this, it's a different vibe when you preach with black folks in the audience. They will talk to you, say amen out loud, make the kind of noise that tell you if you're making sense with them. Preaching is a, conver is a conversation. In other words, preaching to black folks is special. Uh, she hasn't been to a church that I used to go to, a Pentecostal church, years and years and years ago. And they all would shout, yeah, amen, and, you know, hallelujah, and praise God every time the preacher would talk. And we're white folks. <laughs> I don't know where she's coming with that. Anyway, so that's another point that she's constantly making about black people. Sometimes my uh, lighter skinned saints, uh, <laughs> they don't know what to do. They, they, they get confused. They, they think, so I, I wanted to let you know, I'm not screaming at you. Uh, <laughs> about y'all is that y'all are real quiet. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's a light-skinned people thing or what, you know. But I grew up in what's called black church, and in black church, people get loud, you know. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to see that it's possible. And so... So here is another tweet. White people are afraid of my husband. The thing is, though, they're afraid of a caricature, not him. He is, he is kind, actually, a man with integrity who loves God and neighbor to them, not, but all, not all, but many. His color represents threat. He's black, so he must be deadly. Uh, this is so, how can I put this? This is not good. Um, basically, I used to go to a church predominantly that were black. And I was never intimidated by any of the tall, big black gentlemen. As far as I was concerned, they're my brother in the Lord, and it was just as simple as that. So I don't know why she's saying what she's saying. She's very, what I've noticed about her, she's very um, obsessed with the color of skin, and that's a problem. Okay, guys, I want to just read some scripture just to bring light into all of this. Because what I've just been listening to is so dark. Okay, after this I beheld, and lo, oh sorry, this is in the book of Revelation, number 7. And this is discussing about what, um, in, in Revelation it's talking about the great multitude. So I'm going to read this. After this I held, and lo, a great multitude with which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and about the elders, and, four, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honour, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. When you are preaching constantly critical race theory or blacks against whites or whatever, you're causing a, a schism in the body of Christ. And this is what Romans says, Romans 16, 17 to 18, King James Version. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine which ye have learnt, and avoid them. For they are, are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, 
but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. There's another scripture that says this, that God is no respecter of persons. That God doesn't look at whether you're white or black or whatever color you are. He's not thinking about that. He's not, you know, he basically loves all of us, all of us, including unbelievers. He loves them. He died for them. And, you know, this type of discussion, it doesn't help your soul. And for that reason, I am warning you about Jackie Hill Perry. She may have preached the gospel, but the fruit is rank and it's rotten. And like I said, I don't know. If she's a Christian, that's between her and the Lord. But I will say this, that you need to stay well away from her. She's not going to encourage you. She's not going to lift you up. And um, anyway, I just, I just, I just wanted to, to share this with you guys, you know. Um, and so this is all I have for you at the moment. And as I always say at the end of my videos, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord let his light to shine upon you. And I'll talk to you as soon as I can. Bye for now. Bye-bye.